Hi everyone and welcome to the next video in a series on the greatest games of all time. This time we're going to look at another famous one. It was played between Lev Polikevsky with the white pieces and Rashid Nazmetinov at a tournament in 1958. They were both very strong Soviet players of the era. Polikevsky was a grandmaster and Nazmetinov should have been but never quite achieved the title for various reasons. He was one of the most fearsome and imaginative attackers in the world, a great hero and inspiration to Mikhail Tal, and remains one of the most aggressive players who ever lived. In this game, as I said, Poligevsky had white and open with d4, after which came knight f6, so going into one of the Indian defences, most probably, and now c4, and the unusual move d6, which is the old Indian defence. Play continued with the main line, knight c3, and now e5, striking at the white center immediately, and after e4, um, which is better than d takes e5, black scores better after d takes e5, even with the exchange of queens. Um, so after e5, e4, and as Metanov played, e takes d4, which is giving up the center at least temporarily with the idea of gaining at least one tempo after queen takes d4 and knight c6. And here Poligevsky played queen d2 which is a line that he played with some success. The idea is to play later b3, bishop b2 and perhaps castle queenside with a cha attacking chances and uh, a nice space advantage and a bind on the d5 square. Nazmetanov continued with g6, preparing a kingside finchetto in order to gain control of the d4 square, which is a hole in uh, the white defense, and also to control the long diagonal in general. And Poligevsky continued with b3 in order to contest both of those positional factors, the d4 square and the long diagonal. And now both sides finchetto, the bishop g7 and bishop b2. And here Nazmetanov castled, and Poligevsky played bishop d3, which is bolstering the e4 pawn and giving nothing away regarding on which side he will be castling. And thanks to his opening play, Nazmetanov has a lead in development, and he exploited it actively here with knight g4, which aims for kingside initiative with moves like knight g e5, f5 and queen h4 in mind <coughs> excuse me and Poligowski continued with knight g e2 which is by most accounts a small inaccuracy better was knight f3 where after for example bishop h6 attacking the queen so queen d1 and rook e8 black is equal but not better as he is albeit only slightly in the game continuation after knight g e2. So queen h4 threatening queen takes f2 check with a huge attack. Um, Poligowski defended with knight g3 but this piece is now awkwardly and inefficiently placed and will end up costing white later. Better was g3 followed up with queen side castling although black will have better middle game chances. So knight g3 and now knight g e5 is how Nazmetanov continued as there's no knight on f3 defending the e5 square he's free to post a strong knight on this square and white can't kick it at least at the moment with f4 because of queen takes f4 and after queen takes f4 knight takes d3 check wins back the material. So or uh, sorry, uh, Poligevsky castled, and you know this is certainly a case of castling into an attack, but it would have taken White too long to castle queenside due to the continual threat of Bishop H6, and if uh, he castled queenside, the king is going to be on C1, so that the queen would be pinned, and um, you know, and not castling is hardly an option given the active black position. But it may have been better to play some preparatory moves first, such as bishop e2, instead of just castling straight away. So f5 now from Nezmetanov, which is 
the thematic push and the most aggressive move as one might expect from him. Also possible was knight g4 which is going to win a pawn because h3 is forced to defend the mate on um, h2 and now comes knight takes f2 after rook takes f2 comes queen takes g3 and if instead after knight takes f2 queen takes f2 bishop d4 is uh, skewering the queen and winning for black easily and I'm fairly certain Nazmatinov must have seen this line and rejected it because despite winning a pawn it relieves the pressure on the white position and ends the attack fairly quickly when there's potentially more to be had in the position that's in uh, the rook takes f2 variations obviously so after f5 Poligovsky played f3 which is hoping to maintain the central e4 pawn and defend off the worst of the black attack but this is not a good move and only adds to black's growing edge better was e takes f5 where after g takes f5 and knight d5 white has almost restored equality and should be able to defend okay so f3 anyway has just been played and now bishop h6 which is you know switching to an unexpected diagonal with tempo as the white queen is attacked and Nesmetinov is preparing kingside initiative and after queen d1 he played f4 which is temporarily locking in the dark square bishop but this problem will be resolved quickly and black keeps the initiative in the meantime after knight g2 and g5 which is aggressive play from Nesmetinov pawn storming in a style one might expect from black in a closed king's indian position yet the center here is fluid uh, so it's very risky and double-edged play and Poligovsky continued with knight d5 which is a great square for the knight apparently coming with tempo as the c7 pawn is attacked and this move also unleashes the bishop on b2 at the same time so you know he's putting up a good fight Next came g4, and the threat of g3 prevents knight takes c7. So Poligowski played g3 himself. We can have a quick look at knight takes c7 though. If knight takes c7, g3, h3 is the best defense, but now of course comes uh, the thematic sacrifice, bishop takes h3. Or after g takes h3, queen takes h3, black has a winning attack. Rook f2 is forced to avoid mate, but now comes g takes f2 check, forcing king takes f2, and now queen takes f3 check, king e1, it's the only move to avoid mate, but after knight takes d3 check, queen takes d3 is forced, and black is of course totally winning after queen takes d3. So that's why knight takes c7 is no good. So g3 instead from Poligovsky now f takes g3 which unleashes the bishop on h6 once more and after h takes g3 he played queen h3 which you know maintains the pressure on the white position and also the strong initiative the threat of knight takes f3 check means that f4 is forced which uh, gives white some chances for escape and Podigevsky had correctly assessed that knight f3 check was now fairly harmless and he must have assumed that Nesmetinov would play this move or if not um, you know that move he would have to move his attack knight to a different square this knight here on e5 but it was at this moment that Nesmetinov came up with his first brilliant idea in this game if you want to try and spot the move then stop the video now bishop e6 is the move which allows his knight to be taken if uh, Poligovsky you know wants it and the main idea of this move is to take the knight on d5 which will allow sacrifices on f4 to create a mating attack as well as um, decisive access to the e3 square in the event of f takes e5 
Podigewski had the sense not to take the knight and played instead bishop c2, which most analysts give as an inaccuracy, preferring instead bishop b1, where there are better chances of defending the white position. Let's have a quick look at f takes e5 instead though. f takes e5. Now comes bishop takes d5, threatening bishop e3 check with a mating attack and as a result forcing bishop c1 taking this uh, bishop is to boo and taking the rook doesn't help at all so after bishop c1 comes knight takes e5 where black has not only won a pawn but continues with a raging attack after for example bishop takes h6 knight f3 check king f2 queen h2 check king e3 and queen takes h6 check White can also try um, knight takes c7 on move 20. Um, if we go back, instead of bishop c2, he can play knight takes c7 here, but this is ill-advised because, as indicated, it removes one of the key defenders of the f4 pawn and allows a great move. Again, if you want to try and spot it, then stop the video now. rook takes f4 is the move which turns out to be a decisive sacrifice after g takes f4 g3 which is threatening mate on h2 forces knight takes g3 but now comes queen takes g3 check king h1 queen h4 check king g1 and now bishop h3 with a very strong attack after queen e2 is forced and now bishop takes f4 where best play goes rook f2 knight g4 knight d5, bishop e5, it's all pretty much forced, bishop takes e5, knight c takes e5, and despite being the exchange down, black has a crushing and totally winning attack. So that's why knight takes c7 is also taboo at this stage, and Polygevsky played instead bishop c2. Okay, that's the end of part one.